So we want to start with some flour. Here we have four cups of white whole wheat. White whole wheat is just a different strain of whole wheat flour. So I'm not going to put all of it in my bowl. I'm going to put some because I just don't know how much I need right now. There is the flour. I'm going to put the package of yeast in dry, a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to start now by adding some water. You can do this right in a food processor. So put your top on and let it go and start adding some water. Now you want the water to be fairly warm, about 115 degrees, I would say. So that was just about a cup of water. Now I'm going to stop this and I'm going to add some honey to this. That's going to help that yeast development. So about a tablespoon of honey, just going to eyeball that right through the feed tube. Yeast loves to feed on sugar, so this is perfect. So that's about a tablespoon. And let's give it a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I would say about a tablespoon of that. That is good. Put the top back on. But what I want to have happen here is the dough to move around the blade. So now I'm going to stop and feel that. And that is just about right. I used about one and three quarter cups of flour for that. So now we're going to take that out. And I'm going to get some pumpkin seeds, which we have right here. All I did was toast those. And you can do this several ways. You can take the seeds and just put them over the dough. And then just work them in. Or you could put the seeds in the food processor with the dough and do it that way. So either way, but you see that this is not sticking to my hands. And I've used just enough flour to do it. So even though a recipe may call for a specific amount of flour and water, it's all in the feel. So you really have to judge how much water you're going to use with the flour. So now you can see that the seeds are popping through. If they fall out, you just take them and push them in to your dough. I'm going to let this sit on the board now because this will make two, but we're only going to make one tart. So I'm going to divide this in half. What you can do with the other half is make another tart or put the dough in the freezer and use it some other time. So that's our dough. We're going to let it sit there and let's come back here because now we have these nice crispy prosciutto pieces. I'm going to move this out of the way and bring up the other ingredients that go into this. We have some fresh spinach that we've cooked down and we have ricotta cheese. Fresh ricotta cheese that we drained and we've got eggs. So there's four eggs in a bowl. And we've got some sharp provolone. Provolone is a cow's milk cheese from Italy. Here it is used to be made in the south of Italy, but now it's made in the north because there aren't as many pasture lands in the south as there used to be. So the milk there was not very good. So now the farmers who used to make this cheese in the south make it in the north. So that's provolone. You can get it sharp or you can get it in a sweeter, milder flavor. I like the sharp for this. So we want to whisk up those eggs. Just break them up. And then we're going to add this to our ricotta. So there are our eggs. We can add them here. You can put that aside. And then we want to chop up that spinach. So let me get a cutting board for that. Make sure that the spinach is dry, really, really dry. So squeeze it out. A 10 ounce frozen package of spinach will give you about three quarters of a cup. So then just chop it up coarsely. That goes in with a mixture. 
And then we want some parsley, flat leaf Italian parsley for this. And give that a good chop. That goes in. If you didn't want to use parsley, you could use some other herb. Thyme would be nice with this, tarragon, basil. You could use a combination. Okay, that looks good. That goes in. And then we want cheese, of course. That's going to go in. Let's not add all of that at once. Let me get a spoon now and get this all mixed up. And this is the filling for our shell, which we're going to roll out. So you really want to mix that up well. You've got a lot of texture going on here because you've got the pumpkin seed and the dough. You've got this spinach filling with the ricotta. And use a really good ricotta cheese. And now, because this is cooled down, we can add the prosciutto and the onion. Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't that look good? Let's just set that aside and give ourselves some room here to work. Let me wipe off my board. That's good. Dry that off so we can roll. And put a little flour down here. Just give yourself a smidge of flour on the board. And now we're going to cut this dough up in half. Remember, we're saving the other half to use some other time. And you can see it's a very nice pliable dough. You just put it on your floured surface. Get out a trusty mattarello. And then you roll this out to fit the pan. And this is not a traditional recipe coming from Italy. But a lot of times, I just take my inspiration for recipes from things that I see, ingredients that I have on hand that are Italian, and go from there. We just take our dough and flop it right there, just like that. Give yourself some slack, because you want this to have a nice edge on it. If you have a little bit left over, you add it to the other half of dough. And then you just roll over those edges, just to get a nice even edge. Take off the excess. OK, does this look good? There's our shell, all ready to go. And now we can put in our filling. So evenly spread it in the pan. This is a great luncheon dish. It's great for supper. It's great in the summer, out on the back deck with a nice glass of wine. Spread it evenly in the pan. And I like to put this on a bake sheet, just in case there are any spills, but I know there won't be with this. Here's our tart. Our oven is on at 425 degrees. In it goes. About 30, 35 minutes later, we're going to go back and check that. You want to make sure a knife inserted in the center comes out somewhat wet. You don't want that to be totally dry. Mm -hmm.